John Middlecoff, Three and Out Podcast. Go subscribe wherever you listen to the Volumes YouTube page. Make sure you hammer that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a comment as well below in the description. Breaking news, Justin Herbert just signs massive contract. A lot of money. Looked like an NBA contract, honestly, when I saw the headline of, I think, two sixty five. Uh, $185 million guaranteed. We will dive into it all coming up right now. First, download the Game Time app on your on your cell phone. Fastest growing ticketing app in America, the official ticketing app of this show. Promo code John, J O H N, gets you $20 off and go to a game. Football, comedy shows, concerts, got you covered. Game Time promo code John. I remember two years ago after Justin Herbert's second season that I talked to multiple NFL teams. And one thing you do as a personnel department is we talk about it a lot in the draft. Like we grade every guy, regardless of where we're picking and what positions we need. It's no different in the NFL. When the season ends, at least by the combine, you have every player graded in the NFL. From Mahomes to Saquon to Brady to random practice squad guys. Every team, every guy has an updated grade based on that season. And then you can go by position your highest graded guys. And I remember talking to multiple teams who are pretty well run playoff level squads. And they both had Justin Herbert as a top five player. Now that was the season, remember, when the the Raiders beat him in week 17 and the Chargers didn't get in the playoffs. We were screaming, God, he should play for a tie just so they both get in. And then Justin Herbert last year had another fantastic season. They're in the playoffs. And they have the devastating loss to the uh, the Jacksonville Jacks. But I think it's clear, and it's been clear from very early on his rookie season. This guy's a star, and he's the total package. We've all watched bits and pieces of the quarterback documentary. We need a lot out of that position. Obviously, the physical characteristics, he's got it all. Size, speed, arm strength, touch. There is nothing physically that he can't do. It, it honestly is pretty crazy looking back. It was understandable, I guess, at the time, but the Tua went above him. If you could do a redraft, Burrow still goes one, but it's one-two. It's Burrow Herbert, and really 1A, 1B. And I know Burrow's accomplished more as a team. They just have a better operation. Herbert's dealing with Brandon Staley, who has dramatically let them down two years in a row. Now, I'm not saying the guy's perfect. I'm not comparing him to Mahomes in terms of complete player or Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. But if you have eyes and you have watched the Chargers play, you go, I'd want that guy as my quarterback. And then, like I said with the quarterback documentary, you need the physical characteristics, then you need the intangible stuff. And he clearly has all that. The knock on him was he was kind of like understated, wasn't loud enough. That clearly isn't an issue because when you're that good, it just makes you a little louder. And from a character standpoint, he's an A+. plus. So the Chargers now go from Drew Brees to Phillip Rivers to Justin Herbert. I don't think we talk enough about how well they've had it from the quarterback position. I also think this contract, who now he gets slightly more guaranteed, I think, than Lamar and, and Jalen Hurts. He gets an enormous deal. He gets NBA money, because that's what these quarterbacks are making now, right? Almost $200 million guaranteed. There will be a $200 million guaranteed quarterback within the next 12 months. And 185 guaranteed, a lot of money, man. It, it really is. Clay Thompson, a couple of years ago, his max contract was $190 million. So the money getting divvied out now at these positions is historically large. And if I'm going to give a historically large amount of money, if I'm an NFL franchise, I have to feel excellent about the player. And I don't think the Chargers could feel any better about this guy. Now, I think from a big picture standpoint, it put pressure on him and pressure on the franchise now to make a little bit of a run. You don't need to win the Super Bowl this year, but can you win a couple of playoff games? Can you be battling with the Chiefs or the Bengals in the AFC Championship game? Because your team, talent-wise, is stacked. Your quarterback is a star. And I oh, what does he accomplish? Just watch the games. I know you can't call GMs and coaches. They all think he's a stud. And they don't just think that about anyone. He is. He's really, really good. He's the type of guy that you want to build a franchise around. Chargers got lucky. Dean Spanos cut a big check. He might not like paying his coaches. He's all they pay the players. Now, granted, the NFL just you get free money with the media deal. 
But I, I think there is tangible pressure this year on the Chargers, on Brandon Staley, on the organization to take a step. It, it's weird because you don't even need to win the division. You play in a division with one of the most well-run franchises in recent memory. I mean, they might be going on a Patriot-like run in the Chiefs. But you should be able to win 12 games and not lose the Jags with a 27-7 to lead at halftime. That's not that's not acceptable this year. And when you pay quarterbacks this type of money, and just in general in, in sports, right, when you start paying players historic amounts of money, you don't fire players. You fire coaches. So Brandon Staley, to me, has been a major red flag his two years as head coach. And if that same thing happens again this year and they underachieve, it's adios because they're in it with Herbert as they should be for the long haul. Um, he's easily one of the most physically gifted quarterbacks in recent memory. Like he's on the short list of like Josh Allen, Cam Newton in his prime, Roethlisberger. I mean, this guy is a physical freak and he can really, I mean, and it's, he's just, he's really, really good. So I completely understand, would have done the same thing as well. Uh, now it's just time to win as a franchise, which you could argue over the last 20 years with the talent this team has had on, on different iterations is probably one of the more underachieving teams. I think it gets back to not skimping on the players, but they've skimped on the coaches. And now all eyes turn to, to Brandon Staley and his coaching staff. Can they get it done when it matters the most?